morning. Uh, I'm Jim Cooper. I'm the editor-in-chief of Digiday, and we're here uh, at the Digiday video studio at the Blockboard Villa, a can 2024 on day three of the festival, and we're starting our day uh, with a bang. Uh, we have Jenny Lewis, who is a CMO of The Knot. Jenny, welcome. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So tell us about your uh, your mission here as a CMO for The Knot. What are sure. the most important conversations you're having while you're here? Sure. I know it's been such an incredible couple of days and so wonderful to connect with so many CMOs as we're in such a transformative moment in time right now, um, particularly with the advent of generative AI and the impact that's having on so many of our marketing strategies. So I would say, you know, first and foremost, I'm here to just make connections and partnerships. This year for me is just all about finding brands that are like minded, that are in support of our mission and our purpose and what we're trying to achieve as a brand and hopefully find some synergies. Um, I would say some of the most important conversations I'm having are around how we're leveraging AI. I think a theme that I've experienced is nobody's quite cracked the code yet. I was at dinner with a bunch of CMOs last night and I was like, tell me, what can I do? What are you What are you doing that is transformative and magical? And everybody was like, oh, this thing, that thing, but nobody seemed to have completely disrupted their marketing strategy yet. Right. But fascinating to hear other perspectives. Um, I, there's been a lot of conversations as well, too, around the role of Google in a lot of our marketing strategies. Organic search plays a big role in our um, in our traffic volume. So that's something that I'm paying particularly close attention to as we think about the role of SEO in the future with the with AI, um, as well as how SEM will be impacted as part of that. Right. How are you seeing um, as as um, someone who controls um, a budget, um, uh, and it has, it has to be very careful how you spend your money. Um, what is your read on like ad verification at this point? And, and are, are, is the industry sort of going in the right direction to make sure that your budgets are spent correctly and hitting the right targets? You know, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I, you know, we have, I'm fortunate that we have an excellent in-house media team. We also have fantastic partners in our data science group. That's been an area of investment that I've made at TK um, over the past two years since I joined. That was something that was fairly underdeveloped. Um, but I think it comes with verifying through partners as well, too. You know, a lot of a lot of times as we're doing media buys, it can feel like we're grading our own homework a little bit and just mm -hmm. leaning heavily on the providers themselves. So partnering with agencies that have data that we might not have direct access to to provide some of that outside in perspective is how we give ourselves a little bit of peace of mind. But I would say it's a real opportunity and one that um, I'm eager to learn more about best practices. Great. Okay. Um, so traditionally, this is a festival of creativity. Um, yes. I know at the Not You do a lot of great marketing, um, but it's also a, become a, a tech festival as well. Yes. How are you seeing uh, creativity and technology sort of blending to support your marketing, which frankly has a really strong emotional uh, component yes. to it? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we like to think about how can we leverage tech to inspire creativity? How can we not rely on it to give us creativity, but use it um, if we're in a rut, if we feel like we need a little bit of a push or a springboard, um, be that through data and research analytics to help motivate us. I'm a big believer, and my team knows I say this quite often, in being data informed, but not data led necessarily, um, because ultimately strategy and intuition should be what's leading us. And hopefully data and technology is just fueling that and providing a little bit of an extra push to get us in the direction that we need to go. Um, but where I've seen marketers maybe fall flat is when they're relying solely on data to make all of their decisions for them and they're losing sight of like that instinct creativity that I think so many of us possess. Has there, has, there been, has there been a campaign for the for the knot that you really felt um, you know was important and sort of moved the needle in terms of creativity but also technology? Definitely. I mean, the the obvious one. So I joined, as I mentioned, I joined the company about two years ago and it's been it, my first year was crazy. <laughs> I just jumped in full force and um, we did a rebrand in the first year. We rebooted our purpose and our mission um, to just shore up the foundation a little bit. And then we launched the uh, company's first ever integrated marketing campaign. So that was without a doubt the biggest creative expression that we've done. We partnered with Special Group, um, a boutique agency I'd worked with in a previous life, um, as well as known for the media strategy and by known brought a lot of the data and insights and analytics and some of this customer segmentation to help inform the creative strategy um, and we tested tons of channels we had never even dreamed of before 
and um, got a bevy of great learnings, some of which are performing well beyond our expectations. The campaign's still in market, so don't have quite the final readout yet, um, but overall we're really inspired by some of what we're seeing. Are some of those experimental channel channels like something like CTV uh, and you're leaning into that? Yep, CTV, OLV, TikTok, Pinterest, um, We'd, we'd been, we'd tested all of those before, but very much so in a performance marketing fashion and something that was just very highly intent based. We were looking for that immediate conversion through, um, our ROAS machine, um, and really comping it to an SEM, which fundamentally they're quite different channels, as many of us know, and how we show up on those channels should reflect the creativity that they require to, for performance. Um, so that has been, that's been a big push for us. What we learned, during that is it's not always going to be cookie cutter. What worked on OLV and CTV really didn't work necessarily on TikTok and we had to tailor our approach quite a bit. I think that's quite intuitive. A lot of us knew that during the creative strategy and development, but there's nothing like getting work in market to really sure. validate your approach. Um, when you're talking to people who might not be uh, really intimately familiar with the knot, they, yeah. they, they know the brand, but um, what's a uh, what um, are they not understanding ab about uh, the client base or the consumer that they should um, in terms of like being under, you know, like yeah. what's what's surprising about the, uh, yes. the consumer of the not? Yes, I would say, um, well, I think what's surprising about the business, and this was an insight that I had in my early days that we started to rally the team around a bit is we benefit from tremendously high brand awareness. It's a gift that I was given coming in. Um, but people, we have an expression that we say internally, that's people know who we are, but they don't know what we do. And they know the brand, a lot of the associations that we see from consumers as well as the industry is for our content and editorial arm, our magazine, maybe registry, wedding websites, all incredibly valuable and important for the consumer experience. But where most of our revenue is driven is through our vendor marketplace. Um, for, if you're not familiar, it's a marketplace where you're able to find photographers, florists, venues, read a depth, a huge depth of reviews and really validate the quality of those vendors as well as reach out to them and hopefully build your wedding team. And so much of what my mission has been over the past two years is how do we start to bring the substance of what drives the business into the core part of our messaging strategy so that we can become known um, as for the technology that we provide and the connections that we're able to make as well as that incredible content and editorial arm that we have. So Jenny, um, when you go back uh, to the home office, uh, back to reality, um, what are the important things you're going to take back to your people that you think are going to be important for them to do their jobs going forward? Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm hoping to take back to them, you know, tactically, just a bit of in, a bit of inspiration, frankly, for what other brands are doing and some of the work that we're seeing get celebrated here. I'd love to see my team on that stage in the not too distant future. Um, and so really bringing some of those creative best practices to the forefront. I think Cannes is an incredible place to um, just see what others are doing and really feel that and apply that to your own work um, in a way that's bespoke and unique to your brand. Um, so hoping to bring back a little bit of creative inspiration, um, tactically a, a bit of, you know, new tools that we're able to leverage to help um, get smarter. And I would say we have we still have a lot of room to go there. Um, so and then as well as some partnerships. And, you know, I think that is something that we've under leveraged historically as a brand. We've done some light partnerships here and there, but it's not been a core part of our strategy. I've seen firsthand um, just how valuable those partnerships can be. And, you know, one plus one can often equal 10, not even just three, um, as people often say. So um, I've made some incredible connections and I'm excited to see what that yields. Okay, great. Um... Jenny Lewis is CMO of The Knot. Jenny, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Jim. It's great being here. Absolutely.